Hello all, so Judy Paid here today and I'm going to show you my new typewriter. Well I've had it a few weeks now, I picked it up in auction. And when I first saw it I just dismissed it but then I checked on the name and couldn't find any real information about it at all. None had been, none are for sale on eBay or had been sold. So I was curious, so I went to auction paid about £50 for this, um, I think about 55 with commission as well. So we have a typewriter here, as you can see it's in its original case, which is a hardwood case, well, uh, sort of plywood case with the um, this sort of paper leveret covering. It has its original leather handle and uh, this is getting on for sort of nearly 90 years old, so this is disappearing by the day, a little bits have dropped off already. Metal catches here and just swinging it round you can see the case is designed so you can hinge it open, you can actually remove the top and there's studs to protect from probably the case more when it is open. Now I'll give you a quick moment to uh, guess what typewriter this could be. Well, you probably read by the uh, description. <laughs> okay, let's move on. A quick jump cut while I get you off the turntable. Be back in a sec. So, welcome back. And here we have a Allen typewriter. Now, made by Richard Uwig. I will uh, put the uh, link to the sort of information I found down below. But he had uh, roughly around about 22 patents to his name of different typewriter inventions. And he made the Allen typewriter. Now, not to be confused with the R.C. Allen, or even a Woody Allen, this is a Allen typewriter, completely different to the R.C. Allen company. Now, while they're common, this one is quite rare. This is a Model 2, because it has three rows, and you can tell the Model 1 it's kind of a lot flatter and longer. Now the Model 3, they only thought ever existed in parts and there's one that was built from parts and that's on exhibit in a museum in um, America. And they did build a second one, no not build a second one, someone actually found a Model 3. So there's only two of them in existence as far as we know. Um, the Model 2, well I have found another picture online of one but for sale or they come up, this is quite a rare machine as they go. Now, when I got this, it is not in working condition, unfortunately. It does need jobs done and there are parts missing. So whether the previous person took them off, put them to one side, was restoring them or, and then for some reason, maybe a state sale at auction, the house clearance, the machine ended up missing parts, which I will go through as much as I know. But it's a quite a nice machine with some interesting features. For instance, let's start right here. It's got a back return underneath here. Underneath the sort of space bar, there's a lever for back return. Three row machine, so it's got figures and caps. Figures make it go down. Caps make it go up. Well, should do. All getting a bit lazy nowadays. It needs a good overhaul. So the caps does raise it up. Now, so that's working. It's got a mystery button here. Oh yeah, and that's caps lock and figure lock. Little bar that goes down to lock them into position and releases and does figures as well. I was wondering about that one. That's cured. So instead of a caps lock that is nearly secondary to the uh, caps or figure and the backspace which is normally, well, later typewriters is on the uh, keyboard, say Oliver was actually a lever here. And just sort of other strange features. Now here there should be two um, spool holders and these return these turn on very similar mechanism little cog wheel as the hammer goes over it moves them across the hammers incidentally are 
three characters long. So you normally got a lowercase, uppercase and number and or figure on there. All the um, keys share at least two um, characters. So you've got Q and 1, W2, E3, R4, T5, Y6, U7, I8, 0, 09, 0, 09, 0, 09, P0. And then you've got at, dollar, percentage, exclamation marks, pound. That's interesting, pound and dollar. Um, equals forward slash cent mark. Or centine, maybe French. I'm not sure. No. Hash, commas. On this one, you've got three. You got um, oh god, the different commas. <laughs> I'm never too sure of those ones. But the different marks. Now this, is, as I say, was a rare machine for its time, and obviously was made in America. So it's unusual to find it in England. Now let's just sort of spin it around, and we can see. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up. Allen Typewriter Manufacturing Co. Company, Allentown, PA, um, Pennsylvania, USA, US and foreign patents pending. So whether those, I believe the patents did come through on that because there's some things. While we're round the back, we can see the um, margin markers are gone. Not sure where. And not the most easy thing to remove. So this lever here isn't actually attached to anything. And that should have a kind of mark and that does move along. And there is a little catch here for ringing the bell. And it's an interesting machine that I'm not sure. Ah, handle release is there. So it's got end stop right there. Oh yeah, the handle forward off unfortunately. Missing one handle from the other side. Put that back on. So it's got the markers there. Normal spring drum return. And a sort of press steel frame. These feet look very similar to our Underwood number no. five. It's a very sort of basic machine, but the way he did things is quite unique or something. So you've got a left side release, um, you have a ratchet on the right to go up, and you kind of have these bunny ears that actually release the um, roller so you get the page out. And when you want to re-engage them, you have to master this. You have to re-engage it with it locked down on the handle. There we go. Yeah, so released and pull them sort of kind of singly in both and that keeps it trapped or is it's natural state I think that's the release state which makes a roll of three and that's probably the sort of type state normal spring loaded paper bar there now a slight problem don't Probably may not pick it up. Looks like the rubber has split on one of the finger rollers, which is unfortunate. So it won't actually turn, or very, it will turn the pattern roller, but not the finger rollers. So it makes paper loading almost impossible. And the arms are bent, but the index indexing to the um, pattern is absolutely spot on. I was speaking to another person about this. So you can see this arm has a slight kink, obviously. But then you can see this bar, this hammer bar, is perfectly in line when it goes up. Um, another particular wonky one is, let's just find, oh yeah, this one's got this sort of gooseneck into it. So whether this machine was built from sort of model one, arms he had them lying around tried something new maybe this is a prototype to the second model there's very little information known and again 
you know, not much, not much information and not many people know. You have a black and a red mark here, I guess, for colour change. But again, do you press it in? Do you, I really need to just go through, see what's connected to each other, clean the parts, um, make new knobs for it. At least have a sort of matching knob. There's this kind of little bar here that I'm not sure it does. It does move under its own steam, but unfortunately, it gets to a point where it was doing it beforehand. The bar is actually, this is, it was like, kind of almost like aluminium. It's got a strange, almost a sort of combination of almost wood or aluminium. But I can see a sort of grain in it. Sorry for the uh, fridge starting up. But it is split under there, which means it opens and allows the carriage to shoot forward. So, interesting machine. One of those ones, yes, it doesn't work and you can't get it home and put paper straight into it. But just through the sheer rarity, how many other people have got one of these? This is a little bit of a bragging, right? We can see underneath, I uh, fashioned up a foot just to keep it level. There's a few bent springs and under here, there's even a, well, one half of a um, ribbon spool, which is jammed in the mechanism, which probably isn't doing it too much. But wonderful simple machine for sort of 1920-ish, 1920 up to about 21. There's not much going on in there. If you look at a 1920s Oliver, um, Oliver number nine, getting on to the sort of 12s. Amazing numbers of levers and contraptions and so forth. So this is, you know, it's a fully function typewriter. I, for its day, it would have been pretty good. But obviously you have the three rows. And once you add the fourth row, you can go away with the figure, just have the caps lock excuse me just have a caps lock and then you can you know you got your a to z or your a to z and then you got your uh, numbers as well it's more fluid in typing um almost a wooden maybe a wooden space bar it has a sort of plastic maybe baker light as well you can see that has taken some damage and uh, the colors or probably the uh, keycaps have got a sort of celluloid covering which has discoloured. Um, on the side you have a ribbon return which is either pulling or out. So you get to the end of one ribbon, you know it's getting tight, pop it back in and the machine will start sucking it round the other way. So you've got all the screws are original and the uh, black lacquer work. Whether so, basically, this machine wasn't popular due to the free row. And at the time in the 1920s, you could pick up a Underwood Oliver, um, especially in America, which obviously had you went in, everyone knew them, everyone sold the parts for them, people had worked on them. You know, this would have been the real specialist of the day it wasn't the apple or android this was getting on to maybe people that still insist on the blackberry phone today because of some reasons or windows phone you know it was a go out of the typewriter market and that didn't fall through i normally sort of give evaluation of the machines as well now i won't sell this one and i paid 50 pounds for it would I have paid more for that? Well, I didn't have much more to pay. I was fighting it out with one other person. You know, if someone offered me a thousand pounds for it, then that sounds like a good deal, but is it worth two thousand? Or did I overpay? Who knows, there's not much on the market to actually compare it to, which is always a challenge. Things are only worth as much as someone's willing to pay for them. But net aside, wonderful machine 
from the 1920s, a little bit of history, and I think that's about it. I'll keep you updated on anything I find, and certainly once I hopefully get it typing again, we will you all have a typing demonstration. So, I'm the duty paid, and until next time, thank you for watching.